Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book haul video. This is my July book haul, and we got 27 books to get through. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to do at least one bulk thing. In fact, that's what I'm going to start off with. We're just going to jump into it because we're probably going to be here for a while. So grab your snacks. Let's talk about why I got these books. I almost dropped this whole stack of books. So, um, let's see here. Right off the bat, I can't wait for the comment section. I thought you were done with Coons. Um, I got uh, several books, paperbacks that I don't have for Dean Coons. They were only 25 cents a piece. I spent $1.25 on it. Didn't see any reason to. Uh, not to, um, because Mr. Murder, uh, the Frankenstein series, Velocity and Icebound, I have, I don't have any of them in paperback, but I do have Mr. Murder in hardcover. I don't think I have any of the other ones. So Mr. Murder is the only one that I, that I have. Um, I have it in hardcover. Let's see here. Yeah, I have it in the, uh, in the small hardcovers that I really don't like. I like the full-size hardcovers. Uh, but I, I tend to collect these and then sell the collections on uh, either eBay or to friends anyways. So, but I keep the paperbacks uh, most of the time. Unless I have, I have built whole collections of Dean Koontz three times and then sold them. I've done that with Richard Lehman twice. So, especially around here where people, for, people just give their books away. I find them at the library at thrift stores for a quarter apiece. And I just build up collections and then sell them. Yeah, you know, why not? Uh, anyways, let me go ahead and put these over here. But uh, I've read all these books, all these Koontz books. Um, I don't think I liked any of them, <laughs> to be honest with you. I really hated uh, the, the Frankenstein series, but uh, it had very little to do with the content of the books. The reason, and I'll, when we get to that uh, that series in my Koontz reread, I'll discuss this more. But the first three books, Dean Koontz didn't write alone. Um, the first three books he wrote with other Kevin J. Anderson, uh, several different people. Well, three different people total, one for each book. And then he just took their names off the books when he reprinted them. Um, I don't know why. Uh, he says that he's always worked better alone, but he worked with those people. And then he took their names off the books, so I'm a bit confused here. Um, next up, we're going into some terrific, terrific finds, uh, getting away from the Dean Koontz nonsense. Uh, Clive Barker's The Books of Blood found this for a quarter. This is volume two, so that'll help with uh, my, not reread, but my read-through, because I've only been able to finish his short stories. Uh, I do have several of his novels, but I've never, I've never even been able to get into them. Um, I've gotten about, I don't think I've gotten farther than 50 pages in any one of his novels, other than The Thief of Always, and that's one of my favorite books. Uh, I easily put it in my top 100 books of all time. It's such a fun book, uh, but I don't like his adult novels, so it's, I, I don't know, but he's, he's our greatest living uh, storyteller. Uh, and then next, I can't believe I found this, y'all. Uh, I don't know if you remember or not, but I talked about this, I think, in a Stephen King video. It might have been one of these book haul videos, but I finally found From from the Borderlands. Yeah, stories of terror, da, 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 whatever. Um, but this one has a story in it by, let's see here. Um, it's the, yeah, Remy Temporalis by Gary A. Bronbeck. It's about... Uh, this guy collecting the pieces of God's face. Such a weird story, but it's one of my favorite short stories of all time. And of course, it's got some stuff by, uh, I think, Bentley Little, uh, John Ferris, Brian Freeman, uh, of Cemetery Dance, no less. Uh, let's see here. I think Whitley Schreiber's in here. Um, Bentley Little, let's see here. I can't, Bev Vincent, Stephen King. I thought, yeah, Whitley Stri Stryber, Streber? I don't know how to pronounce it. Father Bob and Bobby. But yeah, these two are probably the coolest things I found for a quarter a piece at the thrift store. Um, sometimes I'll find them at the library for a quarter a piece. This is a thrift store hall. We have a place uh, in town called Hope in Action. Uh, it's a Christian bookstore, and they usually have amazing horror horror collection. Uh, I bought most of their stuff, so now it's just like Bibles and uh, Joyce, whatever her name is, Joyce Joyce Meyer books. Um, oh yeah, and they got they probably they have well not probably they have a whole shelf of Sarah Palin's Gone Rogue. Yeah. All right. So next up we have Thomas Harris's. You know, you're gonna be able to see that Black Sunday. It's the last one I need for my paperback collection of his stuff. I own all of his books in paperback. I do have Carney Mora. Um, in hardcover back here, and I'll get to that eventually, even though everybody's like, no, do it, run away from the book, it's so bad. I'm going to find out for myself, y'all. I'm going to find out for myself, like I always do. But yeah, so I've never actually read this one. Um, I thought I did, but the synopsis doesn't sound familiar. So, And I think they made a movie of this. If they did, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. So, 
Alright, last of the paperbacks, well not last of the paperbacks, the last of the mass market paperbacks is a gift from my friend Terry Nevermore by Harold Schechter. Is it Schechter? It's Schechter. Yeah. It's got a, a raven. Nevermore. Yeah. It's got a raven on there. That's some blood blood drippage. It's actually a pretty crap cover. Uh, if you look at the, the blood on the cover, you could tell that the blood was just like photoshopped on top of it. There, there's like, the, there's weight. It's, it's like it's hovering on the actual cover itself and not on the ground. It's pretty bad. The, the bird's pretty badly photoshopped in there as well. Okay, um, next we're going to get to, let's see here. I don't know what to do next. I got 27 books today, y'all. I don't know what to do. So we're just going to go, I, I should have probably organized these by gifts also. Because um, I just got everything just kind of all slapped together. But this was a gift from my friend JB Taylor. Uh, he runs a channel called JB Reviews, I believe. Um, I, I think it was uh, Reads and uh, Shoot, what was it? Or Taylor Taylor Reads and Reviews. He's changed his name at least once. But uh, he sent me this Kafka on the Shore. I own this, but I don't own this copy, this version of it. And I love these versions just as much as I love the new Rainbow um, Ink ones. Uh, those, are, I think, are just beautiful on the shelf. Uh, my my book tour, I think my third book tour, bookshelf tour, you can see my collection, the rainbow ones. Those look gorgeous on the shelf, but I do love these ones. They have really boring spines, but the covers are very, very nice. So there's Kafka on the shore. Um, this will pro probably end up being um, my reading copy because my uh, ra rainbow one is in pristine condition. So... Next up, we have a book that has like a, fu a funny thing, a funny little story behind it. I think, um, not the book itself, but how I came across it. Uh, the Invis no Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. Um, this is a book about race. Uh, it's a, I believe it's a literary novel about race. Uh, I thought this was The Invisible Man um, by H. Well, I didn't realize that H. G. Wells wrote The Invisible Man and Harlan, not Harlan, Ralph Ellison wrote. Invisible Man. So the difference between the two books is the. Um, H.G. Wells has the Invisible Man. But uh, I bought this and I was like, wow, I didn't think H.G. Wells wrote books this thick and he doesn't or didn't. He didn't. I, I don't know what this is. Let's look with. Oh, it's just a, it's just a receipt. Okay. So that one's going to go over there. Next one is a book I bought uh, that I think I own a copy of when I got home. Um, it says on Goodreads that I own it. Uh, but Winter... With, yeah, Winterwood by Patrick McCabe. So if I have two, <laughs> two copies of this book, whatever. Um, it was only a quarter at the library. <coughs> by the way, the uh, Invisible Man was only a quarter at the library also. No wonder I couldn't pass it up, right? I mean, come on now. Come on. Let's be honest. Next up is one I have to show you the spine of because it didn't come with a dust jacket. I think this is volume... I'm not sure. It doesn't actually tell you in here... That's unfortunate, but I believe that this is volume 35 of Weird Tales. The dust jacket for this for this version is amazing. Um, I believe I believe it's the one from uh, from volume 30 35 because I, I went in and typed in the ISBN. If you want to look it up, um, it is ISBN 0517661. Two, three, three. I will probably read everything in here except for the, uh, I will try. I'm not going to force myself to read anything. But I will uh, try to read everything in here except for the, uh, except for the Lovecraft. Because as you guys know, I don't like R Lovecraft. I mean, forget all the other BS with, his, with how terrible he was as a human being. I just don't like the way the dude writes. Um, but there's some there's some stuff in here from authors that I have enjoyed in the past, like Clark Ashton Smith. Uh, let's see here. There's uh, Ray Bradbury has Let's Play Poison. I love Ray Bradbury, by the way. Um, let's see here. There was someone else that I got happy about. Theodore Sturgeon. That's another one. But yeah, so uh, volume, I believe, 35 or 36. It's 30-something of Weird Tales. I thought I had stumbled across something that was, you know, rare. But no, the, obviously, they, you know, they had several different volumes over the course of time. I never actually read, I never actually got a chance to read any of the Weird Tales books when, uh, when they were active. Uh, they, they came back, I think, uh, well, of course, I, I don't even think I was born while they were active. Uh, I, was it, they closed in the 70s? I can't remember when, when it was. It tells you in the, I actually read the, um, the introduct, the forward. 
Uh, yes. Um, yeah, it ceased publication in 1954, but then they brought it back um, for the internet age, or somebody tried to, and I'm not sure if they closed again. If you guys are more knowledgeable about Weird Tales than I am, please let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Um, also, again, I'm not going to sit here and read all the synopsis and everything. I'm just going to tell you why I bought all these, because I don't like watching someone just sitting reading synopsis for, you know, 30 minutes to an hour long. I just, I'd rather tell you, and if you're interested in the book, you can hop over to Amazon and check out the description. So, um, let's see here. Next one, next two, I'm going to go ahead and throw up two, three, three. And no, I'll just do two. Um, there is uh, Faceless Killers by uh, Henning Mankel. Yeah, <laughs> it's the Kurt Volander series. So there's that one. And then there's a Friday Black, which is a collection of stories I'm going to get to very soon because, I mean, the cover, y'all. It's so gorgeous, man. It's beautiful. Oh, also, I didn't show in the invite. These are gifts from my friend Terry, by the way. But the author's photo is right here, too. I usually show the author's photo. But, uh, anywho. And then there's <laughs> there's him looking very much like John Irving. I don't know if it's going to show it or not. Anywho. But, uh, <laughs> is it going to focus? It's, it's focused. Okay. I was worried. Oh, don't worry, boy. Patrick be down there in the comments talking about, you're out of poker, see? Yeah, I know, I, know, I know, buddy. I know. And I know I can cut and then start over again, but it's a lot of fun just, you know, if I can make it entertaining while you're waiting, I can, I can make it entertaining. Uh, so, all right. And then the next one is a gift from my friend Terry. It's uh, the brief life of Oscar, no, the brief wondrous life of Oscar. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, by Juno Diaz. Uh, I'm going to probably get to this one before the end of the year. Um, I've been putting it off far too long and I really want to try his uh, his longer work because I read some of his short stories. Uh, Terry was nice enough to send this for my birthday. All the stuff from Terry in this pile is for my birthday. Uh, let's see here. Next up are two books. I'm just going to put... Uh, Caroline Kepnes uh, was on Twitter, and we were talking back and forth with Amina Akhtar and uh, Araminta Hall, and all of us were talking about books like their books, like Hashtag Fashion Victim, which is uh, Amina's book, Araminta's book is uh, uh, Our Kind of Cruelty, and of course, uh, Caroline's books are You, Hidden Bodies, and Providence. I love all three of those books. They are just fantastic books, and they got to talking about their inspirations and books like their books. Caroline Ketnis brought up, uh, the, of course, the, no, 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 Araminta and Amina both brought up the Patricia Hightower, God, I hope I got that right, Heis, no, Highsmith? I, I can't remember, but the Thomas Ripley series. I didn't care much for that, I know, I know, rage at me down there in the doobly-doo, um, but I wanted to know, are there any other books that are like your guys' books, and Caroline uh, brought up Perfect Days by Raphael Monk. Montes, and then The Beloveds by Maureen Lindy. And when Caroline Ketna says buy something, man, I, I am, I'm definitely a follower in that regard. So yeah, both these books. Also, this cover is fantastic. That bleeding palm tree, man, that, that's some rad shit. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. I'm looking forward to both of these. These are probably going to be winter reads for me, uh, just because I like that kind of thing during the winter. Anyway, next up is a the Turtle Boy. This is just Peregrine's Tale. This is the short story. It's technically part four in the Timothy Quinn series. Uh, and my friend Nick was nice enough to send me this. This is absolutely amazing. It is a signed copy, uh, limited to 550 copies. Keenan Patrick Burke, and I think the... Uh, is it the... Who's the other signature? Is it the artist? I'm guessing it's got to be the artist, right? Hang on, let me see. Alan M. Clark. Yeah, ah! Sorry, I had a mosquito on my finger. What the actual... Anyways, uh, Alan M. Clark has illustrated the writing of such authors as Ray Bradbury, Robert Block, Joe R. Lansdale, Stephen King, George Orwell, and so on and so forth. So yeah, um, so Arthur M. Clark did this. Keelan Patrick Burke wrote it. Um, so all the art is Arthur's. I don't know Arthur. Why am I calling him by his first name? I don't know. But yeah, that was super nice of Nick to send, send over. Uh, let's see here, what else we got? Alright, the rest... No. One, one more paperback, uh, trade paperback. This one I screwed up with. This is The Lizard King, uh, The Essential Jim Morrison. This is not uh, his poetry. I thought it was his poetry. I should have flipped through it and find out. But this is actually interviews and uh, some uh, maybe some short fiction, some biography stuff or whatever. So, yeah, um, not too thrilled with this one. I would probably just end up either giving it away or selling it. If anybody wants it, uh, comment down there in the doobly-doo and we'll work something out. I
Um, okay, next up, another one that Terry sent me for my birthday was Wiley Cash's uh, This Dark Road to Mercy. It's a library copy. I will probably uh, take all the stuff off and clean it up. Oh, it's got deckled edges. My god, I love me some deckle edges. I don't know why, because I like flipping through a book to look ahead, and it is really hard to do. Not to look ahead, the, to see how much longer I have on a chapter, that kind of thing. Um, and <laughs> you can't really do that with deckle edges, but I, I love the aesthetic of them, which, again, is weird, because usually you're putting the book in to where the spine, well, not usually, all the time, so you don't even really see them, but I like the feel of them. I like the look of them. I don't know. Am I weird? Yeah, I'm weird. I'm weird. Give it up, y'all. Next up is a gift from my friend. Once again, J.B. Taylor sent me his copy of Vox because he hated it. I love the idea behind this, um, so I'm excited to read it and try it. Um, who knows? It is Blurred by Lee Child. I wasn't expecting that. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Lee Child or Vanity Fair or The Daily Beast, or, and I don't know the other people who blurred this book. So now I'm kind of worried. I didn't realize that. Um, me and J.B. tend to have the same... The same tastes, uh, he likes Haruki Murakami, he likes Stephen King, um, but we do tend to differ on some things. Like, we, we, we liked uh, Colson Whitehead's The Underground Railroad. I can't remember what else, but we tend to normally fall on the same category. But the things that he didn't like about this one, I think I might actually appreciate. So, yeah, I'm going to give this one a shot. This is another one I'm going to read uh, pretty soon. I also have the audiobook I forgot I got. Next up, just for you guys out there that like to scream at me about Dean Koontz, I got 77 Shadow Street in hardcover because it was a quarter at the library. It's the same day that I picked up the, the paperbacks. So, yeah, I mean, this one, from what I understand, this is one of his worst books of all time. Uh, damn near all of the Koontz fans that I talk to, uh, the few that I do talk to, hated this one. Um, in fact, uh, I think there are two comments about the, how terrible this book is on my Phantoms review. I believe I could be wrong, um, but yeah. So I have no. I don't think I've ever read this one. This is after I gave up on him. Um, I tried Ashley Bell, but uh, I, yeah. And I, especially this is one of his thicker, thicker books. Uh, in hardcover, it's uh, 445, 46 pages, something like that. Uh, yeah, 451 pages, and. I just, I wasn't going to spend that much time with it. Um, I tried Ashley Bell, which was another one. Uh, I ended up giving up on Ashley Bell within two pages. But, we're doing the Coons Chronological reread of the books that I can get my hands on. So, yeah, my buddy Cody Tidwell is actually doing all of them, even all of the old out-of-print books. So, I don't know if he's planning a review series or whatever, but I will definitely link y'all and, you know, you guys can check him out. I don't, he doesn't do videos, but you can definitely check out his, uh, his written reviews of them. Next up is another one that I got at the library for a quarter uh, from my, just my Book of the Month Club collection, and that's An Anonymous Girl. Uh, this is one of those stupid things that I end up buying that I know I will probably never read. It looks like a generic-ass thriller. If I'm wrong, let me know down there in the doobly-doo uh, if this is just another generic, you know, uh, domestic thriller. Um, I do like Lisa Jewell, but she's about the only one I've seen do the domestic thing right. Um, I don't agree that Caroline Ketnis is a domestic thriller, um, because it doesn't have to do with domesticity, domesticity? Whatever. I think You is a horror novel. I honestly believe You is a horror novel, because I, it terrified me anyways. But anyways, so, uh, what is this thing? <laughs> What is this? I mean, oh, I do love uh, Nathan Ripley. Uh, his uh, Your Life is Mine. That one isn't a, really a domestic thriller. But uh, what is it? Find You in the Dark? Is that the name of it? Where is it? Yeah. Find You in the Dark was a terrific domestic thriller. Um, then again, it wasn't really domestic because the point of it wasn't really the family, but it was the family. It was the care. I don't know. What is a domestic thriller? Isn't it just like when the wife or the husband, they're married and they're... What, what's a domestic thriller? Y'all had that discussion down there in the doobly-doo. Because I done got stuck on stupid, and I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. So we're going to talk about The Gifted School <laughs> by Bruce Halsinger. This book uh, was sent to me... This is the last one that was sent to me for my birthday by Terry. This is probably the only one that I might not ever read. Um, I don't know. It sounds interesting. It's just not my kind of thing. It's more like a contemporary experience. If nothing else, it's going to look fantastic in my Book of the Month Club collection. Um, but uh, I, all the stuff that Terry sent me, of course, I appreciate, but this, I don't, I'm not sure that this one is my jam. You know what I'm talking about? Anywho, next up are the, the two that I bought. 
I guess brand new. One of them that one of them was on clearance, and it might actually make some people upset because Cemetery Dance said something. They said that their that their first uh, their first editions sold out. Um, I'm wondering. I got a first edition of Flight or Fright on clearance at bar not books a million um, for seven dollars. So that's the only way I was going to get it. Um, I didn't realize it had such a such a great uh, table of contents, though. Such a great collection of authors. It's got Joe Hill, uh, Cody Goodfellow, um, let's see here, uh, Ray Bradbury, Roald Dahl, Stephen King, James Dickey, man. Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, do they count the stuff that they send to the... Is that considered sold out? If they, I mean, that doesn't make any sense because, you know, if they were to send all the copies of like a Stephen King book out to Books a Million, and then it just seems, I don't know, it seems fishy. Y'all let me know how that works as far as the publishers are concerned because they said this joke, the first printing, first edition, first printing sold out, but yet there's a whole, there's whole stacks of these up at Books a Million. So I'm wondering if maybe, I don't know, how does that work? Y'all let me know in the doobly doo because I'm kind of. I'm kind of sketched out. Anyways, last one is one that uh, Don Wilson has been talking about for months, so I went ahead and grabbed it. Uh, the The premise and the idea is great, I think, um, but I am worried that it's going to end up being a generic thriller. And that is The Chain by Adrian McKinty. I think he's a uh, Irish, and he wrote an American thriller. Um, the only reason I bring that up is because they uh, some of the blurbs have mentioned... Um, how well he wrote an American novel, a novel uh, set in America, an American voice novel, yet he's not American. So, and that's another reason why I picked it up, because it's not an American author. American authors tend to just regurgitate the same crap over and over and over again. Don Winslow, Stephen King, those guys are just, are, are different in that aspect. Um, but, you know, I'm talking about, like, the James Pattersons, the, the Dan Browns, the Clive Custlers, you know, all that stuff. Uh, usually when an international author makes it over here, like Yo Nesba, their books are at least decent. You can finish them and enjoy them, you know, anywhere from three to five stars. I've never read an international novel or a translated novel. I know this isn't translated, but, um, I've never read an international or translated novel that I didn't at least give three stars, I think. If someone wants to prove me wrong, definitely jump over there to the Goodreads and find one. But yeah, so the chain, um, it's got blurbs on, people were picking on me for this, I said that uh, Stephen King, I don't think, uh, he, he's maybe blurred two good books out of the hundreds of blur books that he's blurbed, and there's a blurb on the front of this from Stephen King, I didn't know about it before I bought it, uh, even though I love Stephen King and I'm a huge fanboy, I think he's got terrible taste in movies and books. That's how I feel. Um, so Don Winslow said this book is Jaws for parents. Um, and Stephen King said this nightmarish story is incredibly propulsive and original. You won't shake it for a long time. What the book is about is, I believe, uh, someone's child is kidnapped. And the only way they can kid to get the kid back is to kidnap someone else's child. And that's the chain. You know, chain letter, that kind of thing. Uh, excuse me, but it's like a chain... Stealing. <laughs> well, chain kidnap. I don't know. Anyways, it's also got blurbs from uh, nobody that I really care to mention. Oh, Meg Gardner. Um, diabolically gripping, hang on tight, because once you start this book, you can't stop. Like the characters in the story, you'll be caught in the chain. Um, unfortunately, Amazon sent this, and there's scratches. I mean, it's deep scratches all over this thing. They got... There's rubs and scratches all... I don't know that you guys can see this, but there's rubs and scratches. Maybe if I get in the light. No, I still can't see it. There's dents and scratches and all different kinds of crap um, on this. And this is the last new book I'm buying from Amazon. I'm done with them. I'm just not going to screw with them anymore. So I have to find another place to buy my new books. Um, and I don't shop at Books A Million other than Clearance. And I don't shop at Barnes & Nobles because they just... I mean, it's insane prices. Full price MSRP or whatever you want to call it. It's the it's the price in here is what it is. Um, and I buy so many books, I just can't afford the full cost of a book. That's the only reason why I shop on Amazon. So if you guys have any 
Uh, let's see here. If you guys have any places that maybe I haven't heard of, just list them. Even if I have heard of them, just list them down below because I'm sure other people want to try and get away from Amazon for new content also. Um, and I don't, I don't read ebooks, so really Amazon is kind of pointless at this time. Um, in fact, we're going to cancel Prime come next month after we finish uh, The Boys um, that we're watching on, well, Amazon Prime, but uh, which is extremely good, by the way. So that's my July book haul. We've been here for at least 25 minutes, I think. Um, so I end all of these the same way, and I want to end this one once again the same way. Book hauls are some of my favorite content. In fact, I would go as far to say they are my favorite content on this platform. So if you guys have any book haul videos, please link them down below. It's a call to arms. Link all your book hauls down below. <clears throat> Another thing is if you don't have a video, just list what books you have. I mean, there's no better way to get to know another reader than to find out what kind of books they're buying. That way I can judge like, hey, why did you get this one? You know, that's, this one sounds interesting. You know, this, that, or the other. We can have a conversation. It's one of the best ways to have, to start a conversation with a group of readers is what kind of books do you buy? What did you buy this month? What had you in the mood for this one? Anyways, I say this at the end of every book haul video, but until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another book haul video. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.